to do it. That was when we were down, to down in Florida. Florida, Karen's vacation, Karen's birthday. Network error, network not available. Old mail. It was two and a half. Thank you. Not a different spot. <laughs> Thank you. Let's make this quick. Well, I I, it. I got it. Right. Maybe it's the thing in the presentation. Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order um, Monday, November the 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. And certainly want to welcome all of you that are in attendance. If we could just take a moment for a solid meditation, please. Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we are privileged uh, tonight uh, during this Veterans Day uh, week uh, to have with us uh, a veteran of World War II. Um, Dr. John H. Lucas served in the Asiatic Pacific Theater of World War II and is here tonight to share with us, uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dr. Lucas. Flag of the United of the States, States of America, America and to the to Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you, Dr. John, I didn't recognize you with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> took it off there. That's John Lucas. Gotcha. Thank you. Would we'll ask the clerk if she would call the roll, please. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Councilmember Davis. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. Councilmember Reese. Here. And Councilmember Shule. Here. We have several ceremonial items uh, to present this evening. Uh, the first is, is there any prayer clock here? It was on my list as one of the ones that was going to be presented this evening. Uh, let me ask um, Dr. Glenda Clara if she would join me, please. Thank you.
This recognizes a day of appreciation to grand family heads of household. I need to be a part of that. Uh, and it speaks to where, according to Generations United, 2017, nearly 2.6 million children live in households headed by a grandparent or other relative. Whereas in these families, often referred to as kin care, kinship care, or grand families, parents are usually absent, and biological relatives such as grandparents, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, or great grandparents bear the primary responsibility for the well being and rearing of children in the family. Whereas, according to the Generations United 2017, more than 25% of all children in foster care system live with relative caregivers. For every child raised in the foster care system, 20 children are raised by grandparents or other relatives outside of the system. 57% of relative caregivers are in the workforce and have provided primary care for more than five years, saving taxpayers more than $6.5 billion each year by keeping children out of the foster care system. Whereas according to the U.S. Census Bureau 2015, Grand Facts, state fact sheets for grand families 2017, more than 226,000 North Carolina children, more than 3,000 in Durham, North Carolina, under the age of 18, live as members of grand families headed by a grandparent and other relatives. And therefore, I, William B. Billville, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim November 17th, 2017, as a day of appreciation to grand family heads of household in Durham and Hitler urge all citizens to recognize grandparents, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, or great grandparents with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. We thank you for the personal sacrifice of your time, talent, and treasure to benefit children and your commitment to family. And witness my hand, Corp. Silver City of Durham, North Carolina. This is the sixth day of November 2017. I'm going to present this to you for thank any you. comments. Thank you. I am doing this at this time because I really think that it's important that we acknowledge the sacrifices that people make to preserve family. So we have grandparents, siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins who sacrifice their time, their treasure, um, just so that they can make sure the children and their families are safe. Unfortunately, those people that do that don't get a lot of support. So on this day, November the 17th, we're going to first acknowledge them and say thank you. But we're also, in 2018, going to start a support group for them and provide counseling and other <laughs> services because they very much need that, um, especially if they're going to keep children out of the foster care system. We want to keep them at home. So I hope that if you know anyone who is raising a child that's not their own child, but a child in their family, that you will say thank you to them. And if you want one of the certificates that we're giving out of appreciation, please contact me. I've got a Facebook page that is called It Takes More Than Love. It takes more than love. So please contact me, and I will definitely get a certificate to you so that you can acknowledge appreciation to those people that are raising um, children and their families. Thank you. Thank you. Testing <laughs> Carlton. Introduce all you guys. Uh, this this represents a resolution recognizing Durham Community Trail Watch volunteers. Whereas the Durham Community Trail Watch, known as DCTW, group was formed on November 3rd, 2012, by the Community Resource Unit of the Durham Police Department to create a team of trail residents, volunteers to help monitor the American Tobacco Trail in Durham. Whereas over the past five years, trail watch volunteers have reported almost 10,000 hours of monitoring on the hiking and biking trails in Durham City and Durham County, 
with 70 currently registered members and 20 members actively monitoring the trails every month. And whereas in addition to monitoring the American Tobacco Trail, Trail Watch volunteers spend their time on the Third Fork Creek Trail, the Elbury Creek Trail System, the Warren Creek and Stadium Drive Trails, the Albuola Trail, and the Sandy Creek Trail System. Whereas the Trail Watch activities include participating in the Durham Parks and Recreations, adopt a trail program, hosting the monthly full moon fever bike ride, participating in local community events, and setting up an education station along the American Tobacco Trail to educate trail users on trail adequate and how safely share the trails. Whereas doing their monitoring efforts, DCTW has been seen a decrease in illegal trail activity, including approximately 20 calls to 911 in its first year, reduced to only two calls to 911 in the last two years. And whereas Trail Watch volunteers work with the city's police and Durham Parks and Recreation Departments to report and repair trail hazards and respond to conditions that may threaten or lessen a sense of public safety on the trail, whereas the coordination and support for recruitment and registration, website and social media support has been transitioned from the Durham Police Department to Durham Parks and Recreation. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, in honor of the Durham Community Trail Watch's fifth anniversary, do hereby proclaim the week of November 6, 2017 as Durham Community Trail Watch Week in Durham, and I urge all residents to recognize the achievements the Durham Community Trail Watch has made to our community and commend the volunteer group for an outstanding service to the residents of Durham. I also encourage other residents of Durham to follow their lead and to join them either as Durham Community Trail Watch volunteers or just to enjoy Durham's trail system. I'm going to my hand in the corporate facility of Durham. This is the sixth day of November 2017. I'm going to present this and make comments and introduce Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Bell, uh, City Manager, Deputy City Manager, and the City Council uh, for their for this honor and for their support that they've given us over the past five years. Uh, I'd also like to thank the the Durham Police Department and their Community Resource Unit for the support they've provided us since 2012. Um, furthermore, I'd like to thank the Durham Parks and Recreation Department and uh, their Director Rhonda Parker. Uh, for their past and ongoing support uh, for, our, for our group and for um, their support as our group transitions into a new relationship with the Parks Department. And uh, finally, I would like to thank our Trail Watch volunteers for the incredible commitment they've had over the past five years to help keep our trails clean, safe, and a, a valuable health, recreation, and transportation asset for the Durham community. Thank you very much. We get a picture. <laughs> Councilman Shul and Moffat, can can you join us for the picture, please? Yes, but why? You why are you picking us out? <laughs> because you guys get out there with us and help us with the work. I'm going to ask the Mayor Pro Tem if she would introduce this next resolution. Good evening. Good evening. It's an honor to present the resolution memorializing the life of Effie J. McDonald Still. For those of you who care to stand while I do this, please feel free to do, to do so. And this is Effie's uh, family. And it reads, whereas F.E.J. McDonald still 
was born in Rockingham, North Carolina on October 1st, 1948 to John McDonald Sr. and Rosa Mae Galbraith McDonald. And whereas a longstanding resident of Durham, Effie attended Durham Public Schools and graduated from Hillside High School in 1966. And whereas Effie worked as a community organizer beginning in the late 1960s with Operation Breakthrough, the first national anti-poverty program. And whereas Effie co-chaired the Religious Coalition for Nonviolent to Durham, a faith-based organization that practices a unique brand of hope and unity, and whereas she was the chair of the Northeast Central Durham Reinvestment Board, Inc., and provided community leadership to establish PEACH, a collaborative project with North Carolina Central University, and whereas her connection to preventing gun violence was a personal one due to her daughter, Ebony Robinson, being shot and killed as a result of domestic violence and whereas. She was a member of Mount Zion Christian Church for over, over 40 years and having served on several organizations. Her family, colleagues, <coughs> and friends described Effie as a caring, devoted, and passionate and extraordinary person. And she was known by her grace, humor, her welcoming heart, and her love for Durham and her dedication to community. And whereas she was a consistent advocate warrior against injustices in our world and for those who were unable to fight for themselves. And whereas Effie is survived by her daughters, Sandra D. Still Smith and Tanya Y. Still, foster daughter Jeremy Farrell and siblings Gloria, James, and John, her grandchildren, Zakia, Nakela, and Torre, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, cousins, and many other loved ones will miss her. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Durham City Council that this City Council pauses in a moment of silence in memory of Effie J. McDonald Steele. that this governing body pays tribute to her life and her contributions to the community, that this resolution be spread upon the official minutes of this governing body, that a certified copy of this resolution be presented to the family. Effie was a real, real warrior and a woman on whose shoulders so many of us stand. She is a living example of what sacrifice really means, and our young people need to use her life as one that they can mimic. Do you want to make some comments? Who's going to make the comments? Okay, Gloria. Okay, so, uh, Gloria uh, Nottingham will represent the family. the Steele McDonald Smith family. Thank you for honoring a mother, sister, aunt, and grandmother who loved Durham and believed the committee she chaired and was involved in could affect change in our city. They were dear to her heart. Again, we thank you. Thank you. I wish that we could stand in honor of this great woman who did so much to make Durham what it is today.
like to recognize you know, colleagues on the council for comments, Councilman Reese, Moffitt, and Shule in that order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to remind folks uh, that tomorrow's election day here in the city of Durham. We are electing a new mayor and three members of the Durham City Council. Um, turnout so far in early voting was not awesome, um, and I'm hoping that turnout tomorrow will be awesome. Um, tomorrow, because it is election day, folks will need to vote in their polling place um, and not at one of the early voting sites. Uh, and thanks to the uh, great work of the Durham Committee, uh, specifically Ricky Hart, uh, who came to us with a proposal um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the, our bus system in Durham, Go Durham uh, Transit, will be free tomorrow uh, so that folks can uh, use it to get to their polling places. Uh, Go Durham has set up a special website, uh, godurhamtransit.org slash bus to vote, that includes not only a list of the polling places, a link to the State Board of Elections where you can look up your polling place if you don't know where it is already, but also it's very helpfully lined up uh, the uh, bus routes within the city of Durham and connected those to a number of the polling places to make it that much easier for folks uh, to figure out how to get to where they need to go uh, to cast their vote. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, I appreciate your time, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Recognize Councilman Moffitt. I was <clears throat> simply going to point out that tomorrow's election day, but I could not have done nearly the justice to it that, <laughs> that Council Member Reese did. So thank you. Yeah. Recognize Council Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> when I first got on council about uh, six years ago, um, we had a report from our Human Resources Department on our health insurance and physical activity, and I foolishly uh, challenged city employees at that time to a five-mile run, which has now become a six-year tradition. <coughs> Only this year, it, for me, it was a three-mile walk. That's what, that's what uh, I'm, I'm a little bit injured, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I but uh, I, the the challenge turned out great again this year. We had some 40 people there to ride a walk or run. Uh, and uh, I want to thank members of the police department who were there, a couple of members of the police department to escort us safely across the streets. And uh, especially want to thank uh, D. Byers from uh, Human Resources, as well as uh, several other members of that department who volunteered, John Tyler, Brian Mincy, Gwen Burnett, Yolanda Seaborn, Megan Woodhouse, and also Barry Blake, so from a couple different departments there. Uh, much appreciated. And, uh, and now, as promised, I will read the, uh, the so, so we start at, at, at mile zero, the American Tobacco Trail. We go, um, I didn't. But the runners go five miles, two mile, two and a half out, and two and a half back. And we had a record-setting winner this year, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Jonathan Hill. Uh, mm -hmm. He ran it in 32 minutes and 27 seconds, which is pretty good for five miles. But he was he's an AmeriCorps volunteer, so I think he's about 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, second to him, uh, Anthony Wambui of Transportation Department and uh, a couple of People, a couple of employees uh, who've been running it for every year, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, Jonathan Baker and Eric Halstead, sorry to say that. Uh, and also I would say in the, in the uh, let's just say age to speed ratio, Paul Wiebke ran it in 38 minutes, really good, uh, awesome speed. So let me just read the, the names of the people who participated, James Liani, Rebecca Martin, Dennis Farmer, Jonathan Hill, Dale McKeel, on bike of course, Regina Youngblood, Anthony Wambui, Jonathan Baker, Eric Halstead, Elaine Van Hoos, Bertha Johnson, awesome, Bertha uh, Paul Wiebke, Randy Stewart, Renee Buchanan, Veronica Jackson, J.J. Scott with a stroller, Sean McKnight, Lloyd Schmeidler, Keegan Huffman, Sharon DeShazo, Melinda Meshko, Charlie Reese with two girls on scooter, <laughs> um, Aaron Harrison, Jeffrey Johnson, Diana Schreiber, good work, Diana, Keith Herman, Rochelle Gurley, David Boyd, always best dressed. Uh, Norma Streak Washington, uh, Jennifer Buzzin, Ryan Wilson, Jamal Miller, Christy West, and Keith Short. So we had a great time, and many thanks, especially to D. Byers and company for organizing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Great, thank you. Recognize Councilman Davis and then the Mayor Pro Tem. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
Uh, we all know that we were led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Dr. John Harding Lucas, Sr. Uh, he is a very special friend of mine and a very special friend of people of Durham. Uh, he is a longtime principal of Hillside High School. Uh, after retirement, he was called to his alma mater to serve as the interim president of Shaw University. Uh, he is a longtime person who has been involved in the education associations, uh, the National Education Association uh, recognized the work that he did uh, to bring together black and white uh, associations in the 1960s and beyond. Uh, and they even came up with a, uh, in the history of NEA, with a concept, and they refer to it as the Lucas concept. Yeah. And that concept has to do with the fact that in many cases, um, black organizations, uh, teacher organizations, were just submerged into uh, the larger white organizations. Uh, John Lucas came up with the concert, concept that if we're going to merge and truly merge, uh, we are not going to have one group to ma maintain its name and another group to lose its name and its history. He suggested that we come up with a concept where a brand new name be put forth. So here in North Carolina, instead of having the North Carolina Teachers Association um, submerged into the North Carolina Education Association, he came up with the concept that we should come up with a new name, and that organization after merger was known as the North Carolina Association of Educators. That concept um, was put forth in lots of other southern states, uh, Louisiana uh, and other places, uh, Georgia and, um, and others along the way. When Dr. Lucas became a member of the Durham City School Board, uh, and we went, came upon the idea of merging the city and the county schools through the um, bravery and the, the courageousness of our own mayor when he was on the county commissioners. Um, Dr. Lucas suggested that instead of having the Durham City Schools submerged into the Durham County Schools, that we come up with a brand new name of the school district and thus we have in our system, the public schools, uh, we call it the Durham Public Schools. So the Lucas concept worked on the national level and here on the local level. Uh, many of us know that uh, this week is Veterans Day and Dr. Lucas is gonna be honored by several people around this, uh, this city on Friday and Saturday and other points uh, during the week. But I wanted to also let everybody know, as I said a few minutes ago, that he gave service during the 1940s uh, to the United States Army and served in the uh, Asiatic and Pacific Theater of World War II. Um, the other thing I want to mention about him, and it's important that during this week, Dr. Lucas will have a birthday. Uh, in fact, in a little less than five hours from now, Dr. Lucas likes to say that he will enter into his 98th year on this earth. Uh, he was born on November the 7th, 1920. Um, so that's a long time ago, but he is energetic. You see how he's pumping his fist a few minutes ago. Uh, he is very, very vibrant, uh, and he wants to have this enthusiasm go on for another 10, 20 years or more. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for allowing me to recognize my former boss, John Harding Lucas Sr. Eddie, you did a super job on that, and... I'm just going to add one little piece to it, uh, since you talked about his age. I occasionally uh, have uh, lunch at Hope Valley Downer, and I'm sitting in there, and I see these young guys coming in, and the one that's got the most pep to his step, Dr. <laughs> Lucas. These, these guys are almost younger than I am, but he, he, you think he was leading them along the way, and he just does it well. You see those sneakers he's got on there? I see. Yep. I see. <laughs> Knows how to do it well. We certainly appreciate you. Thank you. Congratulations.
May I add? Recognize the, the mayor I, pro tem. I must add that Mr. Lucas is a pinochle <laughs> quiz. I was at the center last Friday, and I thought about you, and I thought, I will never play pinochle with you, <laughs> ever. That's great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're quite welcome. Are there any other comments by members of the council? Uh, if not, we look at priority items first by the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of council, good evening, everyone. Mr. Lucas, congratulations. Thank you for your service. Happy birthday. No priority item this evening. Uh, likewise, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And likewise, the city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll proceed with the agenda. First item being the consent agenda. If uh, items can be approved with a single vote, if a member of the council, a member of the audience, removes an, I an item from the consent agenda, we'll discuss that later in the agenda. I'll just read the agenda uh, item number. Item one is approval of city council minutes. Item two is the Durham Convention and Visitors Bureau Tourism Development Authority appointments. Item three is the Durham Housing Authority Board of Commissioners appointment. Item four is the Workforce Development Board appointment. Item five is the appointment to the Go Triangle Board of Trustees. Item six is police property and evidence room performance audit September 2017. Item seven is inventory performance audit June 2017, dated September 2017. Item eight is an item that can be found on the general business agenda as a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Item nine is amendment to contract with McCormick Baron Salazar Development Inc. for additional environmental and construction costs related to the Southside East Phase Two project. Item 10 is Durham Chapel Hill Carborough Metropolitan Planning Organization Downtown Durham Transportation Study Agreement. Item 11 is East Durham Outfall Repair and MLK Junior Parkway Outfall Relocation Contract with J.F. Wilkinson Contracting Company, Inc. Item 12 is a resolution authorizing the negotiation of an installment finance contract and providing for certain other related matters. Item 13 is September 2017 bid report. Item 14 is the Sixth Amendment to Assignment Agreement for the Durham Athletic Park Operating Agreement. Item 15 is Public Art and Placement placemaking contracts for police headquarters complex project. Item 16 is furniture, <coughs> fixtures, and equipment purchase contracts, move management service contract, and Duke Energy Service Agreement for the police headquarters complex. Item 17 is the Housing Appeals Board annual report for fiscal year 2017. Item 18 is stormwater infrastructure inventory and assessment for parks, trails, and cemeteries, SD 2017-02. Item 19 is adopt preliminary assessment rolls and set public hearings before confirmation of assessment roll for street completion and portions of Ravenstone and Stonehill Estate subdivision. Item 20 is a contract ST 289 request for qualifications RFQ for utility locate services. Item 23 through 25 are items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Entertain a motion for approval consent agenda. So moved. Second. Improper move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? It passes seven to zero. Now it's not working. On the general business agenda, public hearings, item eight, 2016 evaluation and assessment report of Durham Comprehensive Plan A170002. Good evening to the council. I'm Laura Woods with the Durham Planning Department, and this is the fifth annual. Evaluation and Assessment Report of the Durham Comprehensive Plan. The EAR is intended to rectify differences between adopted future land use maps for the city and the county, a report on progress toward implementation of the Comprehensive Plan, proposed changes to Comprehensive Plan policies, proposed updates to the future land use map, and summarize emerging land use and demographic trends. In 2016, six, uh, 17 plan amendments needing rectification were approved by the Durham City Council, and three plan amendments needing re rectification were approved by the Durham Board of Commissioners. These cases are listed in Table 1 of the report. 
and shown in maps included as attachment one. Changes of the amount of land designated on the future land use map uh, for particular land uses are shown in figures one and two of the report. The largest change this year, this past year, was approval of five design districts around proposed rail stations. Design districts, as you may recall, uh, are intended to regulate form rather than function and accommodate a mixture of urban land uses, including commercial office and higher density residential. Uh, concerning one of the design districts, uh, the Lee Farm design districts, please note that the joint city county planning committee at their meeting in January indicated to staff that the elected body's intention to leave Lee Valley um, boundaries and the future land use designations unreconciled until further station area planning is completed and design district zoning is implemented. This year's EAR proposes changes to a number of plan policies. These are identified in attachment two of your report and by, by and large these are uh, wordsmithing, slight changes in uh, assigned duties to different departments or changes to department names. Uh, this year's ER proposes changes, oh, excuse me, uh, attachment three summarizes accomplishments in implementing the comprehensive plan as described by the city and county departments uh, involved. Uh, planning department canvases, all, all city and county departments responsible for um, implementing policies. And um, I do want to compl compliment all the departments this year. We had a very robust um, response rate this year. On August 7th, 2017, the Urban Open Space Plan was presented at a work session of the Durham Board of Commissioners. At that time, the Board of Commissioners recommended a, or requested a number of changes, and this was the plan at, that had previously been adopted by the City Council. Um, and staff brought back the revised report to the Board of Commissioners and with certain changes um, which are listed in your staff report and also in the resolution um, this evening, um, they adopted the plan and you will need to consider rectifying the slight revision of the plan, um, county's version with the city version this evening. Um, and the revised plan is attached to this report. Okay. Um, uh, planning staff does recommend one significant change in the formatting of the plan. Um, you'll note an attachment which lists all the policies which have, at this point, have been accomplished. And staff recommends moving all of those policies in each chapter to the end of the chapter, leaving everything that is, has still to be accomplished at the front of each chapter. That will make it easier for you, the elected officials. It will make it easier for staff and for the public to identify things that still need to be accomplished. And so uh, it's a ra rather simple formatting change. Oh, we do recommend it. And um, we hope for your approval of this evening's report. And that com completes my uh, report. Thank you. This is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. You've heard the staff report. I would ask first of the questions by members of the council. I recognize Councilman Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a very thorough and excellent report. Um, the fully implemented policies in attachment four. Um, so are these policies that have been implemented over forever? I mean, these aren't just policies that are implemented this year. These are policies that have been implemented over time. That's correct. And all of these policies have been approved by both the council and the county commission? That's correct. Are there any other things that are not reconciled um, except for the, the Lee Village uh, 
situation that you mentioned? Uh, yes, the three, uh, the um, Board of Commissioners has already acted upon this report and has reconciled their future land use map with all the plan amendments adopted by City Council in 2016. And Council will now need to rectify the City yeah. version with the three plan amendments that were approved by the Board of Commissioners in 2016. Right. I'm sorry, I, I got that and I appreciate it. Any, anything else that we're leaving hanging, I guess, is the question. I don't think so. Okay. We certainly tried not to. Yeah. And, and are there historical things that, 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 that are hanging out there like that as well, or something other than this year? I see Pat coming up. Uh, Councilmember Schill, I believe there's only one other unrectified item, which is the 751 South development. The, there was a tier change that was adopted by the uh, county bringing into the suburban tier, and the city did not uh, choose to rectify or, or to uh, adopt that change. Okay. Other than that, uh, that's the only other unrectified item Thanks. at an LA Village item Laura told you about. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, and thank you, Laura. The, the um, you know, whenever you... Whenever I see this, it's just an incredible body of work, complex, important. And I know it's hard to answer to two masters, the city and the county. And so I just want to appreciate what you all do in order to do that. Thank you so much. Um, the urban open, space, over, urban open space plan, is that what you're talking about, changing the format of, Laura? Is that what you were saying? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Um, perhaps I was unclear. Yeah. Um, as you know, the comprehensive plan is divided into chapters. Yeah. And those policies that are listed as completed uh -huh. in, the, in the attachment of your report, yeah. those would all be moved in the comprehensive plan um, from active okay. to their own section at the end of the chapter. That leaves everything that's still active in, fir in, in the front of the chapter, yeah. so it makes it easier for you to identify. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. All right, well, let me also then just comment quickly on the urban open space plan, which is it's just amazing, and I just really hope we can implement it. There's so many good things in it, and reviewing it again uh, just gave me a new sense of that, so thank you. Other, other comments? Recognize Councilman Moffitt. Actually, I'm going to pass. Thank you. Uh, if there are no more comments on the council at this time. I'd recognize anyone in the audience that wants to speak on this item. No one has signed up to speak. Uh, this is a public hearing matter. So if anyone would like to speak, now's the time. Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak on this item. I would declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. Mr. Mayor, I'll move approval of the resolution uh, that's at attachment A in our uh, packet. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. We move to item 23, Durham Morrisville annexation agreement. Um, good evening, Grace Smith with the Planning Department. I would like to take a moment to affirm that all legal notice requirements for both planning items have been carried out in accordance with the state and local laws. Affidavits for those uh, legal notices are on file in the Planning Department. Um, tonight I'm here to present the updated an um, annexation agreement between Morrisville and Durham. Um, in 1997, the City of Durham and the Town of Morrisville entered into an annexation and utility service area agreement as per has um, permitted by state statute. The agreement covers the area in the southeastern Durham County and northwestern Wake County, where the municipal, municipal boundaries for both converge. The agreement that was adopted in 1997 expired on October 1st, 2017. Um, we have been back and forth with uh, Morrisville to update the agreement, mostly just boundary descriptions. There were some pins and pids that changed, so that has been taken care of. Um, it's in attachment one for your review. The, uh, town is more of more, the town of Morrisville actually approved the agreement on October 24th, 17 at their council meeting. Um, if you have any questions, staff is available. And Again, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. You've read the staff report. Other questions by members of the council on the staff report? Comments? 
hearing none, let me ask, is there anyone in the public that wants to speak on this item? This being a public hearing matter. Uh, let the reflect, record reflect that no one asked to speak from the public. I'll declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before council. Move the, move the ordinance. I guess I need to. Uh, Ordin ordinance and resolution. There's one motion and you need to um, move the, it's to adopt the ordinance and the resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the agreement. Uh, so moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Move to item 24, amendment to the economic development incentive agreement with Migrate Property 2 LLC. Reginald Jones with the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. <clears throat> This item recommends the approval of a contract to amend the agreement between Migrate Property 2 LLC and the City of Durham related to the economic development incentive contract awarded to Migrate Property 2 LLC on June 6, 2016. The Office of Economic and Workforce Development recommends that the City Council conduct a public hearing on the proposed amendment to an economic development economic incentive agreement per general statute 158-7.1 and authorize the city manager to execute an agreement amendment between Migrate Property 2 LLC and the city of Durham dated June 6, 2016 that would extend the deadline for the project completion to September 30, 2018. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. You've heard the staff report recognize the city manager on this yeah, If you could, uh, Mr. Jones, could you just give a little further explanation for the reason for the extension? There were some issues related to uh, the ability to achieve success with the project. Uh, an engineering firm was working with the planning department, was not able to do what they needed to do, and the owners of the project had to replace that firm there were some other issues relating to timing with loan and financing because this is a brownfield property and the bank required some more testing to be done. So they ran into those problems and trying to get that. The owners are here tonight if you would like to. That's fine, just wanted for the record, thank you. Okay, you've heard the staff report. Are there comments recognized? Is that Councilman Shule? Yes, sir. Councilman Shule. <clears throat> Just one quick question, which is, uh, and you could, this is also applies to the next one, which is, I'm assuming we still have confidence in both of these items that the, uh, the folks with whom we have the agreement uh, are able to execute on these. Uh, we're pushing them both back in time. We're allowing them extra time, but are we confident that they can still execute? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Recognize. Councilman Reese. I had a, actually just a couple of questions for the um, developers if they're here. Yeah, I'm here. I, th oh. I thought he said they were. If this is the appropriate time, I'd love to do that. Hi, I'm Cameo Voorhees. I live at 220 East Knox Street. Hi there. Hi. Uh, first of all, appreciate you being here tonight. Appreciate yeah. your willingness to come and talk to me a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, I was um, absent uh, the evening of June 6th, 2016. Um, and was unable to participate in the in the um, public hearing around that mat this matter at that time, uh, but I did uh, watch the video uh, later on, um, and I noticed I remember that my colleague Councilmember Johnson asked you some um, I think difficult questions about the the use to which the property would be put uh, in a if the this project were to be successful, uh, and one of the reasons you were unable to provide assurances about the types of folks who would be hired to work there, whether or not folks who in the neighborhood would be hired to work there, or whether or not they would be paid a living wage, for example. Um, the reason you couldn't uh, talk about that very much was because you're not developing it um, yourself to operate a restaurant. You are just developing the project to be the landlord. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, <clears throat> since uh, that's been, gosh, a Oh, about a year and a half ago now, right? Yeah, yeah. a year. So has the, has the situation changed at all with respect to the prospective tenants? Yes, so okay. we do have a tenant in place. We have a signed lease. 
and we did end up choosing a local minority and woman-owned business who are actually residents of East Durham. So we've hopefully addressed some of the concerns that um, Councilwoman um, Johnson had. Okay. Um, and have you spoken to them about um, the concerns that were raised at the meeting concerning uh, paying their employees a living wage? Yes, we did talk about that. So we had conversations around um, living wage and also hiring people from the neighborhood, and they seemed agreeable to both things. And uh, I feel pretty confident that that's what they will move forward with. I appreciate you being here and taking the time to answer my questions. Thank you. Are there other questions by members of the council? Is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak on this item? Again, this is a public hearing. No one had signed up to speak. Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak. I would declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. Move the item. Second. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. We close the vote. It passes 7 0. Uh, moved item 25, second amendment to the economic development incentive agreement, A and J Capital LLC. This item recommends the approval of a contract to amend the agreement between AJ Capital LLC, A and J Capital, and the City of Durham related to the economic development incentive contract awarded to A and J Capital on February 2nd, 2015. The contract was amended on October 17th, 2016, with a contract period that would end on December 31, 2017. The Second Amendment provides for the company to complete the project by June 30, 2018. The Office of Economic and Workforce Development recommend that the Council conduct a public hearing on the proposed amendment to an economic development, economic incentive agreement per General Statute 158-7.1 and to authorize the city manager to execute a second amendment with ANJ Capital LLC and the city of Durham dated February 2nd, 2015, that would extend the deadline for project completion to June 30, 2018. Thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing. This staff report has been made. Again, Mr. Jones, for the record, could you uh, provide the, uh, the explanation for why the second extension is needed? Thank you. The first challenge that the project faced was the untimely death of the architect who was coordinating all the activities with the site planning. Um, so there was a lapse in time in order to find someone else that was competent enough to work within our planning department to get that done. All the other pieces of this contract and the project have been moving forward. And so that slowed down the delay in order that it would happen next month. And that's why the request is coming now. Thank you. Are there other comments or questions by members of the council? Uh, if not, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on this item? Again, this is a public hearing matter. Uh, let the record reflect that no one else asked to speak. I'll declare the public hearing to close. Matters back before the council. Moved or removed. Second. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close, close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Uh, at the start of the meeting, that concludes all the items that are on the agenda. Uh, there was a young man that wanted to have some time to speak. I don't know if he's still in order. Okay. If you can come to the podium to your my right, uh, state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Bryn Behrenshausen. Uh, I live at 5514 Penrith Drive. Um, I'm here tonight because uh, I think like a lot of people, I'm uh, devastated by what happened in Texas over the weekend uh, and am very concerned about the epidemic of gun violence in this country. And uh, to be quite honest, I don't feel safe in my own country with the rampant uh, examples of mass shootings that have happened in my lifetime. And I've been told repeatedly that you need to get involved in your local politics. So I'm here asking my city council, what are you doing to protect the citizens of our city? What can we do uh, within the law 
I don't know what our state law permits us as a city to do um, to put restrictions on uh, assault rifles and these weapons that have been repeatedly used to slaughter people. 14 children died the other day. It's horrible and we can't let the status quo go because people are losing their lives. Is there something this body is willing to do? Do you have the ability to do anything within our state law to combat this problem? Well, I'm going to defer to our city attorney, but I can tell you that I, for one, I'm a part of a group called Mayors Against Illegal Guns, and uh, we have done all that we have tried to do in trying to uh, diminish the opportunity for Ill illegal guns to get in the hands of persons that shouldn't have them. Uh, quite frankly, our hands are tied to a certain extent by what we can do, not only at the federal level, but at the state level. But, but having said that, I'm going to defer to the city attorney for any legal comments he might want to make on that respect. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And over the course of the years, the uh, General Assembly has taken more and more control away from local governments to be able to do anything um, on this. In fact, they have taken the, up the entire field of anything remotely related to gun control. So this local governments really have very limited, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would assist you in uh, in the concern that you've raised, that I think we're, we're all concerned uh, with, um, but uh, there have been efforts to talk to the General Assembly about some things, but so far there really haven't been any, uh, cer certainly nothing back to the local governments for us to be able to do anything in this field, which is unfortunate. Mr. Baker, we're, yes. we're even prescribed by law from, like, determining where people cannot carry guns, right? Like That's correct. Can't keep them out of our own parks. If That's, correct. That's correct. That's correct. Mr. Mayor, recognize Councilman Moffitt. I want to first thank you for coming tonight for your concern. I share your concern, and I know that every one of my colleagues does as well. It's incredibly frustrating. It's, um, it, but, but that concern is not just for the horrific events that happened like yesterday, but for the daily gun violence that occurs <coughs> Agreed. In, 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 in our city, here in Durham. And so um, we're, we're all... Um, open to more suggestions. We, uh, I think we've all done what we know to do, and, um, and we share your concern. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, again, appreciate you taking the time. And if you have thoughts in terms of what can be done, we have a general assembly uh, we have members from the General Assembly that are here in Durham. You might share that with them also, to see what, what they might be able to do. And, and, and the council, the new council, the council will um, develop a legislative agenda, as, as we have done every year, and um, ask, you know, that's an agenda that we'll put forward through our elected officials. So that's another opportunity to <coughs> advance ideas. Are there any other comments? If not, the meeting's adjourned at 7.55 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Go vote. Somebody. Tomorrow. <laughs>